Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Today we'll cover five typical steps needed to automate a process. Awesome stuff, man. Hey, it's Jackie from Denmark. And Joe Glines here from uh, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and today we'll cover, uh, as we said, five typical steps needed to automate a process. Just just so people know, um, this kind of came up because we were talking about something um, that, that Jackie had noticed in a, a group that he's in. Uh, but let's work through the stuff. Jackie, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Why don't you go into the first one? Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's why we kind of got to this. But the first one would be manually, you know, free form doing work where where everybody is just doing whatever is on their plate. That is, is one of the steps where where you kind of get bored or, um, you, you know, you just do it. You don't, you don't really look too close at it. And uh, you might even request the help of more to get the stuff done um, because everybody is just doing it whichever way they find best. So, so yeah. That's so true. I was going to say, because, uh, yeah, there is no quote unquote right answer. No one knows. Um, you're not borrowing from anything and you're just trying to come up with, you know, you're, it's kind of like, usually it's like, Hey, we just launched a new thing. Holy crap. Like we got some you know questions to answer or we have something that we need to do around this. What are we going to do? Well, you just answer, you just work, right. You work through it. Um, and, and the, thankfully humans are very good at this. Absolutely. And, and I'd say from, from the example, we kind of took some of these from was a group of doctors who were answering people's questions about the coronavirus virus. And they, they were doing a fine job. They, they had maybe, I don't know, I joined pretty early because I knew a friend of, of one of these doctors that said, hey, don't you want to join? And that's fine. They, they were doing an okay job. They were I think there were three or four who started the group and it started growing really quickly. And, and from them just answering when they wanted to and, and like here and there and whatever, uh, they, they started to struggle a bit when, when more people joined because they, they had an idea of not letting people comment on anything so it was an answer and a doctor uh, answering the question or it was a question sorry and a doctor answering that question and nothing else nobody else was allowed to comment in any way uh, which made it a very very simple group to be part of because you didn't have to weed out anybody's uh, opinions about anything so yeah and then but, yeah well let me let me jump in here so so then the doctors you know and i know just from talking to you right the doctors you know we do this and then all these new people are coming in and a yeah. lot of them are asking the same questions over and over and over they're just not they're not doing search they didn't read our our previous podcast where we talk about how to get help and stuff right they they didn't do a good google search on whatever they're doing um and so the doctors are going like oh my god this is taking me forever it's too much time you know what, why don't we start building a list of like best responses and then the bare minimum, we can just copy those and paste them in, right? To help streamline, speed it up. But there's no really still agreed upon quote unquote right answer in other than like, hey, we have a list and maybe even different people have their own list that they're working from, right? That's It's not one consensus for everybody, uh, but that's just kind of the general processes. I get overrun with work. I have too much to do. It's stupid for me to rewrite this thing over and over and over, right? So I'm going to find a way to streamline my responses um, to that. So that would be the next step I think that often happens. Yeah, yeah. And it was exactly what happened. They, You you kind of saw them saying the same thing over and over and, and you kind of recognized that, oh, this is either a copied in response uh, with uh, a few amendments or whatever, and um, or they would link to a previous response, which worked uh, okay, but they were still kind of 
like scrambling with all of these uh, new people coming in and them being a little too few and people being very, very eager to um, answer the questions, even though the rules specifically said that they wouldn't be allowed to do so. Uh, but again, they hadn't really narrowed down their best practices or the, the real method of doing it this correctly. But they started to, to get some templates and some linking and some stuff done. It was interesting to follow. So I'd say the next thing that I'd also say it seems like they did was uh, clean up the list, you know, clean up and prioritize the questions you had, um, the order uh, you put the questions in, um, the rules you would set up, because all of a sudden there was this generalized um, pinned post that had the rules very, very clearly stated. And I'd say as a third point, absolutely. Make sure you actually get it cleared and Put it into order. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and I think also it's it's um, in addition to what you're saying because it's the same it's the same part of the process is now instead of me having my little templates of the what I'm using set we're all using the same list and because this is what and I know you've you've gone through it with the auto hockey forum right it gets painful how many times you see the same flavor of a question it might be slightly worded slightly differently but it's really the same question right how do i how do i spam a key how do i click this thing right um and that's where you get everyone to agree like here are the top 10 faqs and these are the responses we're going to have to those and you're all doing you know you're all on board with these are the ones we're using right and that way it's it's very consistent um but i actually i liked your point also of putting, I think there's a little bit of psychological stuff. When you put a link to prior asked questions, um, it kind of helps people realize, oh crap, this has already been asked before, right? Like I should have looked maybe next time that person will do a little more harder investigating before they ask the question. So I, I think that that's a good thing to be thrown in there. Um, yeah, now, I, I, yeah, sorry. Ahead. Okay. Um, I'd say one of the things is of course the Facebook algorithm, making it a little bit hard for users to to get exactly what they need and i don't think that a facebook group oh. is the exact place to actually do this but it was a unique concept at the time and and that's probably also why it got so popular but on the same hand a lot of people were only seeing someone's question right. that one doctor's answer Right. And they weren't really seeing the group oh. or all the prior answers. Yeah, the group they, search they, is not easy to find, you know, at least right now in the groups I'm on, it, it, you have to really look for it. Yeah, yeah. So, so even their responses ending with, make sure you don't uh, comment. Uh, doctors are using too much time on uh, moderating and deleting uh, other people's responses and it's actually making us uh, waste time that is unneeded on every question and it took a really long time for the majority of the users to stop i, I don't know how big the problem is currently but at least it seems as if after them saying that for a, a significant amount of time as something that seems like now they have a template where this is a part of the answer, uh, it ended up seeming to help. Now, I don't want to go off topic to, it's not really off topic. It's very pertinent to, to this topic. It's just, it may not be applicable in all the situations that we're you know, generally describing. But if I remember correctly, and granted, it's been a long time since we've had this conversation about the doctor thing. If I remember you said, also, a weird thing that would happen was when a doctor, like people couldn't normally reply on their own, but yeah. if a doctor started typing a response, there's something to do. Like the second they start typing, other people could actually do stuff with something with that, right? Yeah. Um, and that was where I think bringing in the next one of 
using auto hotkey to automate that bringing in of your template, however you do it, or whatever tool you want to use, right? But making it easy to bring in that text, really kind of like paste, hit enter, and you're done in a fraction of a second, right? Or maybe it's one second, um, negates that whole issue. Besides everything else, the benefits of now it's standardized, right? And, and we still have a human deciding which one goes in there, but it's a very nice, clean, structured, exactly what we want in there. Um, and we don't have to worry about spelling errors and link bad links and all those things, right? I mean, there's so many benefits to it. Yeah, I'd say one of the things that I heard and, or read or whatever you'd say from being part of it without being a close part of it in any way is that they were trying to overcome this hurdle of as soon as I approve a question because I want to answer it, and I'm actually typing in the Facebook edit field. Um, the 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 comments just explode, right? It, it's like when the doctor is done answering, they they need to delete a hundred comments or something like that. And um, it, it sure enough, that's a waste of time because that was not the point of it. And at one point. I started seeing them saying stuff like they would use Word or whatever uh, to, to probably pre-type it. But a lot of them also just wanted to, in their launch break, uh, take their phone and type in an answer. So that's why they are trying so hard to get people to actually stop commenting because it wasn't the idea of it. But not doing it that way, if they had kept it in private messages or something, it wouldn't have been uh, accessible information. So. Right, right, which right negates the whole, which is, we've talked about this, when when people message me for support and help, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to help you on a one, unless I know you prior and this and that, right, you know, I'm not going to help you. Now, if you want to repost the question to the forum, you know, and point to, I might answer it for you, but like my whole thing is I want to help a lot of people, not one person, you know, unless I know you and there's a reason for it. Yeah. And that, that yeah, especially with doctor's time, right? They're, they're even more critical of limited amount of time. And that's where, why, as you said, the fourth one of using some kind of software to actually automate the process. I think some people in IT or proximity to IT would know the systems from web sites or other things like a ticketing system and stuff like that, where where you have both something that can keep track of how long response time is and gives you a good interface to actually make your stuff like that. It, for the Facebook group, that was maybe harder to make, but if they had had access to someone who could make like an Arahati GUI or something similar for them, they could have saved a lot of time, a lot quicker uh, than what they ended up doing. Yeah, and you want to cover the last step? Yeah, on the fifth one, the language uh, or the the way of utilizing stuff like uh, AI, where you could, or a bot or whatever you'd like to call it, where it would put in a response. A lot of people might have seen these on, on other websites or web shops and stuff like that where you enter and you immediately get this small notification in the corner of your screen where it's like, can I help you with something or uh, just type in your question or yeah. whatever it might be. And sometimes it works great and other times it's, it's just people don't even want to see it because that's what not what I'm here for right now. Um, but those are getting better. And um, in, in many cases, and I've even suggested stuff like it at work, where we are getting a lot of calls from people. We are supporting maybe a million people. And so, fair enough, there's a fair amount of questions on the phones. And I'd say they don't even want to have a typed in uh, system where you can say, oh, press one if blah, blah, blah. Uh, press two if something. And uh, I'm like, but we're getting some questions that isn't even our geographical location or, or just because our name is as big it is, as it is, P 
people outside of, of our area of uh, coverage would still contact us in the hopes of getting help with whatever. Um, and you could weed those out or send them to someone more appropriate if you ask them, like, what's your uh, area code or uh, whatever right. that's called. Right. Yeah. yeah, to help filter and drive. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the thing to me is, like, for the difference between steps four and five, step four is it's assisted AI kind of thing. Like, we're, we're, we have some desktop automation, right, but it's a human is triggering it. And then there's the unassisted AI, which is that's what um, automation anywhere, you know, Blue Prism and uh, UiPath, like kind of that. That's on average. They're compared to Auto Hotkey, right? That's their area that they have some pretty amazing tools. And we could do this with Auto Hotkey, but it, it would it. We don't have, generally speaking, built algorithms we can just borrow from automatically and you know just throw them in there, right? Whereas they might have stuff that's closer to it. I'd say that one of the reasons they probably have it is the money, right? It, it's the dedication of whoever is there being paid to work on it day in and day out uh, with a clear goal of automating uh, business processes where, where with Arahatki, it's, it's, as we said before, it's very human assisted and it's a lot of new people coming in trying to automate this smaller part of whatever task they have at hand. And um, the people who get really good at Arhatki either end with the project where they needed it, or if they get really uh, into programming, might move on to something else. And a lot of time, people don't even have a job where that's the main uh, idea of it so you never end up actually building an algorithm or anything like that that it can be used in, in such an advanced way well let me throw there's a couple of things I, I think the very first thing you said about it's the money right like it's spot on a huge part of it right is um it does take a lot of time to to you know build systems to do this um that, that's a big part of it and it's also why for you and i when we typically automate a process, we don't automate 100% of it, which wouldn't be included that you're automating that response that you, you can intelligently have the computer react for you, right? We will automate often like 80% of it or 85% or something because that last extra bit, it does. It costs a lot of time and energy and money to, to solve, right? And so for us, we're like, you know what? I, I just rather get it done in headache, right? Um, so, yeah. But the other one, which they don't, they're, they're going to, I don't, I don't want to say a lie, but um, they'll kind of mislead you at the beginning to say, oh, yeah, we have things we can slap in here. But you know what? Here's the real truth. Because remember, I'm a data scientist, right? I did this stuff for a long time and understanding a lot of stuff. Um, they still need a lot of data to use algorithms to predict on on how to answer, right? You're not going to skip that beginning part where you have humans have, you know, actually live responding to stuff. Or if you do skip it, people are going to be really hateful because it's going to be terrible, right? Like yeah. computers, we're not at that level yet where even with the best systems, what's the one from IBM, Dr. Watson? Is that what it is? Or no, there's a different one. Um, but they're getting kind of close at the highest end. They're getting kind of close where conceivably it could be possible. That would also cost a bloody fortune, right? Um, but yeah, that, there's that first part where humans, this is this is what we do, right? We answer questions and we can think dynamically and interpret and understand the context in different ways that just programming for that is insane. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'd say with all the deep learning and all the different other methods, sure enough, it will be crackable at some point. And with all the data collection that's going on, sure enough, some of the big companies will have what's needed to make uh, some type of um, general concept like AI, uh, where, where it will be able to answer questions or pre lift tasks that we don't currently uh, know when will be possible, but I'm, I'm not doubtful that it will be possible. 
uh, after seeing the, um, the the recent AI that can write pretty good convincing texts and stuff like that, and hearing that a few like Google and a few of the other ones have other AIs that they don't even want the public to have access to because the capabilities of them is hard to maybe fathom. Um, so keeping them inside some kind of testing facility or whatever you call that, or making sure only to alleviate it for your own, who knows, but yeah. The other one I want to add on in there, which, which is, I'm sure you'll agree with this, is even though Automation Anywhere stuff, they'll say, oh, we do have a cutting edge thing that can do all the stuff. And, and again, they they wouldn't out of the box. After time, you know, they would have a tool. But it it never, again, handles every case, right? It'll it'll handle the majority of them, maybe like 80, 85% of the, the questions, but it doesn't handle all of There's always exceptions, Right, like that programming around that last bit is just crazy, um, and yeah, it's it's one of those things that we're we're just not there yet in computers, you know, um, especially when you factor in the cost, right? Because again, someone could say, "Well, I can build a tool that'll blah, blah, do this," you know, the vast majority of the time, yeah, but again, at what cost? Yeah, exactly. And general AI is one of those really big pivot points where there, that's why some are calling it a singularity if, if it ever comes to pass. Because if a computer or an AI actually ends up being better at that part of our capabilities, then it's hard to say where it will stop. So, so yeah, currently keeping it at these five steps, the manual part of it, building the best practices, the cleaning of the list, the, pr the, the prioritizing, the, the making rules, right? Because as soon as you have determined exact steps and rules needed to actually perform the task, then you can automate it and start by using the, the assist way of doing it. And if possible, look into the fifth one and actually leverage uh, some kind of uh, algorithm that can perform all of it fully automated. But yeah. Well, and you might even consider a hybrid on number four is after we have an assisted way with humans doing it, you could say, you know what though, every time this keyword or this thing happens, it is this answer, right? Maybe we can get rid of 10 to 20% of questions just because there are some that are so predictable. I don't care if I, and also there's no real cost for being wrong, that it's okay to, to go ahead and say, let's just throw them that way. And, and if we're wrong, it's okay, right? Um, so that wouldn't, we could still do an auto hotkey because it's a very simple thing to do, right? It's the really complex things that, that become much more difficult. But yeah, thanks for working through that, Jackie. That was a, a awesome, I think, overview for, you know, where you start and the general process you go through to get that, you know, up and running, a, a much better response time uh, and, and process for dealing with stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Yeah, bye. So thanks for listening to the podcast and please remember to comment and let us know what you enjoyed about that. And if you have any questions, you know, add in there because uh, it's really great to hear your feedback. If you enjoyed that episode of the Automators podcast, you might also like this one. From ground zero to complete success, automating a process in six simple steps. Yeah, let's get to it. If you like that, make sure you go to pod.theautomator.com and look for it.